Hey everybody, this is Mr. MathLog. This uh, lesson is 11.3, Multiplication and Division Equations. I'm sorry, I'm out in my trailer. It's hot. So I have my air conditioning going. My wife is inside ironing and she has music going and that's a little distracting in the background. So I know you can hear my air conditioner and that might be, but it's less distracting than her groovy music that wants to make me get up and dance with her. <laughs> Anyways, you guys, here's our uh, our common course strand for our most awesome teachers. So, and then our essential question is, how do we solve equations that contain multiplication or division? Okay, so let's uh, let's try this uh, explore activity uh, by modeling equations. Hey, it shut off. It'll turn back on shortly. It's a hot day out there. There we go. <laughs> Uh, Deanna has a recipe for potato cakes that require 12 eggs to make three batches of potato cakes. I don't know what a potato cake is. It's kind of hoping to be like cookies or something, but how many eggs are needed per batch? Okay, so what we're going to do is let X represent the number of eggs needed per batch. So the number of batches times the number of eggs per batch will equal the total eggs, okay? So um, the number of batches, we can see that there's three potato batches of potatoes. It says that right here, you guys. So um, uh, there's three batches of potato cakes, okay? And X is going to represent the number of eggs that are needed per batch. So three times how many eggs are needed per batch will equal the total eggs right there, okay? So uh, that's going to be x, and then that's going to equal 12 right there. So here we're going to use algebra tiles to solve 3x equals 12. Let's just slide that up right here, okay? So let's go ahead and model 3x's. So here's, here's 3x's right here. 3x's equals 12, and I line these up so they're in groups of threes, okay? So <clears throat> that way we can do this, you guys. There are three X tiles, so we can draw circles to separate the tiles into three equal groups. So I did that here, okay? So all I did is I just circled them into uh, three equal groups, okay? So how many uh, one tiles are there in each group? Okay, well, I can see in each group Here's an X and one, two, three, four. There's four one tiles, four one tiles, four one tiles. So there's four one tiles in each group right there. So um, uh, there's going to be four eggs that are needed per batch for Deanna's potato cakes. Again, I don't know what potato cakes are, and I forgot to give a period right there. Let's put a period right there. Here we go. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, so so um, uh, why is the solution of the equation the number of tiles in each group? Okay, well the number of one tiles in each group equals one of those x tiles right there. Okay, so so um, we have whoops, let me get my little grabber here. So there's uh, four one tiles that represents this x, which is our x is our um, number of eggs that are needed in our three batches right there. Okay. Okay, so using division to solve equations. So separating the tiles on both sides of an equation mat into an equal number of groups models dividing both sides by the same number. So what we did is we divided uh, by 3. Okay, that 12 we divided by 3. So the division property of equality just says we can divide both sides of an equation by the same number as long as it's not 0. And uh, your high school teacher will tell you why it can't be zero. You can never divide by zero. So any number, as long as we divide both sides by the same number, then the two sides are going to stay equal. Okay. So when an equation contains a multiplication, we solve it by uh, dividing both sides of the equation by the same number. Okay. So let's solve each equation and graph the solution on the number line. Okay. So here we're going to we have 9a equals 54. So we're going to first divide both sides by 9. And I'm just going to put a 9 underneath each side. And then we cross out the 9s, and then 54 divided by 9 is 6. Okay, so check the solution. So 9a equals 54. So does 9 times 6 equal 54? Yeah, we get 54 equals 54. So let's go ahead and graph our solution. a equals 6 on the number line. So we're just going to put a point right there on, on 6. Okay. All right, so how about here? Let's do the same thing. Okay, this time the variable is on the right-hand side with the 6, 6D. So we're going to divide both sides by 6. So throw 6 underneath, and then the 6 will cancel on the right, and 18 divided by 6 is 3, so D equals 3. 
So let's check. 18 equals 6 times D. So does 18 equals 6 times 3? It sure does. So let's go ahead and graph that. So our answer was 3. So we're going to bubble in 3 right there. Okay. All right. So using multiplication to solve equations. Excuse me. I'm going to cough. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> I've had this cough for a good month. Anyways, I apologize, you guys. So. Uh, when an equation contains division, then solving we solve it by multiplying both sides by, of the equation by the same number. Okay, usually it's in the denominator, and that's what we multiply both sides by. So, so we can multiply both sides of an equation by the same number, and the two sides are still going to be equal. Okay, so here we got x divided by 5 equals 10. Okay, so what we have to do is first to get rid of that 5 in the denominator, we multiply both sides by 5. So I'm going to wrap those in parentheses and put a t five times each one right there so over here you guys these these fives will cancel out or left with x and then five times ten is gonna get us fifty right there okay let's go ahead and check that you guys let's plug in fifty for x is fifty over divided by five equal to ten whoops i should make that equal to ten not fifty this should equal ten so fifty divided by 5 does equal 10, so 10 equals 10 right there. Sorry, let me uh, fix that right there. So now let's go ahead and graph that solution right there. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, put that on the number line right there. And then our answer was 50, so we're going to bubble in 50 right there, and we get uh, that right there, okay? So x equals 50 right there, okay. How about this, you guys? 15 equals r divided by 2. Okay, to get rid of that 2, we multiply both sides by 2. So wrap it in parentheses and put a 2 right there, okay? And then what happens is, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. So I'm going to uh, uh, cancel this uh, 2 right there. This 2 and this 2 are going to cancel each other right here. Okay, and then we'll be left with r on this side equals 2 times 15, which is going to be uh, 30 right there. So if we check, is 15 equal to 30 over 2? So does 15 equal 30 divided by 2? Yes, it sure does. So when we graph that, we're going to graph r equals 30, so we'll bubble in 30 right there. All right. So here we're going to write another real-world problem for the equation 8x equals 72 and then solve the problem. Okay, so x is the unknown value that we want to find. 8 is being multiplied by x. So anything that's per, like a money, so per or driving uh, per hour or something like that. So 72 means that after multiplying by 8, the result's going to be 72. So here's something like this, you guys. A hot air balloon flew at 8 miles per hour. So per means multiply. So write and solve an equation to find the number of hours the balloon traveled if it covered a distance of 72 miles. Okay, so 8 <coughs> miles per hour. We're going to let x represent the number of hours. So let's slide that up. So here we're going to use the equation 8x equals 72, and x is going to be the number of hours. Okay, so we're going to divide both sides by 8, and we get x equals 9. So the balloon traveled for about nine hours. All right, you guys, I hope that makes sense. And yep, that's how you spell olive oil. All right, guys, take care.